Kochia is, is really one heck of a weed. Unfortunately, Kochia is very good at developing resistance. It has a whole bunch of characteristics that make it a high risk for resistance development. It produces just a ton of seed. This plant can produce up to 25,000 seeds just from it. Uh, it cross-pollinates, so this plant could be pollinated by another one that has uh, different genetics in it, so it can pass herbicide resistance that way. Of course, it can tumble through the field, and we've all seen those pictures when uh, glyphosate resistance was first found in kochia, and guys would spray their field, and there'd be a track of living kochia from where one plant had gone. One thing that we don't think about that often is the seed bank longevity. Kochia has a very short seed bank longevity, and although it's counterintuitive, that's actually detrimental. That makes it better for kochia to develop herbicide resistance because a plant sets all its seed in one year. If that plant has resistance, all that seed is going to germinate the next year, and there's none of the susceptible kochia left germinating from the year before. There's always a little bit, but essentially we can say none. So you can shift your entire population in your field from susceptible to resistant very, very quickly. In Western Canada, it has resistance to group two. Uh, it, it's throughout the population, we assume that 100% of the kochia in Western Canada is resistant to group two. Uh, more recently, it's developed resistance to glyphosate. It's one of our first glyphosate resistant weeds. The most recent survey that was done was done in Alberta in 2017. Results came out in January of 2019 showed that 50% of the kochia populations they surveyed were resistant to glyphosate. So one in every two fields has glyphosate resistant kochia. So of course, now we're almost forced to manage kochia as if it's glyphosate resistant. Uh, the bigger surprise of the survey and bigger concern is that group four resistance is present in our kochia populations as well. So 18% of the populations they surveyed had resistance to group four. Uh, that's resistance to multiple different actives within group four and at very high rates in some cases. The most concerning issue is that kochia has developed stacked resistance. So it, some populations out there, 10% of populations, in fact, one in every 10 fields, has a kochia population in it that is resistant to group two, group four, and group nine. So it really starts to limit the management options that we have left to control kochia. If you have a field that has that three-way stack of resistance in the kochia population, it is going to be difficult to manage. There's no doubt about it. You have some herbicide options left. Obviously, group six, primary bromoxanil, that's going to be very important. Group 27 is going to be important. Group 14 and group 15 will be very important to mix into your control strategies to manage kochia. But at that point, if you have that three-way stack, kochia becomes one of the most important things in all your management decisions. So competitive varieties, seed early, get your crop out ahead of the kochia as best as you can, and manage your kochia when it's small and manage it often. So really try and control the population, keep the size of the weeds small when you're spraying them with herbicide, and try and limit any seed set that's going back into the field.